Hey folks, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking some Seven Pines. This is the Civil War Brigade series game from the Gamers. I believe this is circa 1996. Oh, 98. So a couple weeks ago I put up a video kind of talking about the CWBS. I had just played Champion Hill, had a good time with it. Talked about some of the similarities and differences between it and Line of Battle. And also some of the scenario specifics for uh, what I was going to be playing here. And that is the 7.4 scenario for the Battle of Seven Pines. So since that video, it was maybe three or four weeks ago, I was pretty busy uh, kind of after I posted that video. But with the holiday weekend, I was able to get some playing in. And right now we are at the start of the May 30 or June 1st twilight turn. So I've gone about 24 turns, half of those being day turns, the other half pretty much being night turns. We're just coming out of the night turns, so straggler recovery, all that type of stuff happened. Uh, but I'm really enjoying this, and I just really want to go over the situation. Maybe show you guys some things that have happened, what I think is going to be interesting about this next day of battle, and uh, just give you some thoughts here. So if you remember right, the situation really starts with D.H. Hill, uh, 1 p.m. He's kind of under orders on May 31st to punch down the Williamsburg Road. He's headed towards the vicinity, vicinity of Seven Pines, uh, and ultimately... You know, they want to push to Orchard Station, all sorts of little victory condition points back there. To be honest, I don't know what the geographical significance for victory points of these places are as the Confederates. I'm just kind of playing it, doing what I would do if I were the general. So D.H. Hill attacked. Originally, there was a division under Silas Casey, who is now wounded, that was located up here holding this position. Those guys got pushed back. D.H. Hill got bloodied, but luckily he fluked out. Um, he wouldn't have had very much support in that attack, and he kind of lucked out by fluking out since he wasn't then forced to go and wreck himself against this division of Kearney that showed up. Uh, so Kearney's up in here. Uh, we've got Hooker who arrived on map at 6 o'clock. Is there anybody else? Nope, so he's sitting on some artillery. This is a pretty strong defensive position right here for the Union. There's a couple of redoubts that these guys are going to use for defensive bonuses. Uh, that's going to be a tough nut to crack. They were not really engaged in the first day. Fourth Corps, however, so the two divisions down here, these guys got pretty, pretty uh, messed up, and that was all courtesy of our friend down here, Huger. These guys originally started down in the vicinity of the Cloth House, I think, or maybe the King School, somewhere down in here. They took orders from Johnson and pushed up this road with the goal of threatening the southern flank of the Union line while D.H. Hill was kind of moving down the Williamsburg Road. They got up into here and initially were pushing decently, but if you look, that terrain is pretty wicked. These swamps take, I think, all your movement points to move through there. I haven't had to move through there here in a quick minute, so I'd have to look at it again. But it makes for a really tough going, and it makes it tough to get your extended lines out, so you're fairly restricted with how much firepower you can bring against Union troops that are lined up in these woods. These guys took a lot of damage, so Wessels is a terrible morale brigade. Palmer took a bunch of damage. Peck, Abercrombie. These guys are fairly beat up, but uh, Huger didn't really... The casualties weren't nice to him either. So if we look at his casualties in his division right now, he's going to be fairly limited in what he's going to be able to do on this day, just based on how many casualties he's incurred. So these little slashes represent stragglers. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't even able to get all of his stragglers back. You'll see I erased, but they were way down there. They got a lot of their stragglers back during the night. Meanwhile, you've got Couch and Casey. So Casey's wounded. He's got a replacement. 
they're not in much better shape. They just have more brigades at their disposal. So I really don't see Huger doing too much uh, on this second day of the battle, but you never know, we could be surprised. More significantly, we had Longstreet arrive, and he's now sitting astride D.H. Hill's division south of the Williamsburg Road. Those guys are all lined up. They're getting ready to kick off an assault that's actually been accepted. So Longstreet's right wing has accepted an attack order. And let's see here, how did I word that attack order? Can we talk about that? So I said at first light, advance east to take redoubts three and four. So here before continuing to Nine Mile Road between Fair Oaks Station and Seven Pines to hold that position. So my goal, instead of running headlong into Seven Pines and giving the Union player a fairly straightforward attack, I wanna kinda swing. Um, so D.H. Hill's gonna be the pivot point and these guys are gonna be kinda the outside of the door swinging up. I'd like to maybe sweep this division up if I can um, because up here in the north we've got Whiting's division which if we move over here they fluked on the first turn that they received any fire in the first day so we've basically got a fresh division sitting here under Whiting they are under accepted orders as well and theirs are to move to Fair Oaks Station before advancing on Orchard Station. So they're gonna kind of move down to take Fair Oaks if they can and then follow that rail line. Uh, I initially had the thought I was trying to get initiative. I would have loved to send a brigade around this way, uh, but I got initiative with the Union to throw a brigade over there. So that kind of uh, negated any of my Confederate thoughts for doing something like that. But you can see the, the battle lines are fairly similar to where they were at the start of the first day. The Confederates really made no headway at all, didn't gain any ground. Um, whiting fluking hurt me bad. Those guys could have gotten into here and probably held this position before a lot of these other brigades back here showed up. They were kind of coming in piecemeal, and Whiting just couldn't take advantage of that situation, which kind of sucked. Um, but if we look here, Whiting's got a pretty big division. He's got five pretty good brigades, two A's, which will be nice. D.H. Hill, he's functional. He's got one brigade that's already wrecked, and Longstreet's ready to enter the fray with everything he's got. He hasn't taken any sort of casualties yet. It's gonna be pretty interesting because facing Whiting is Richardson and Sedgwick who haven't taken any casualties and facing Longstreet is gonna be Hooker and Kearney. So, could be a fairly stand-up fight. I think if there's a couple die rolls that skew some retreats or something like that, could be interesting. I really need Huger to accept his attack orders this turn. Uh, so this is the first light turn but Huger's orders are essentially to move to the west of these swamps, get into a position here, and kind of just be in a holding pattern to take Seven Pines while they protect the flank of Longstreet moving up this way. I am concerned that they're going to move that way and then we're just going to maul them here if Huger can't get going. So... That is one of those things where when you're playing a series like this, you have to play the game within the spirit of the rules. Obviously, if you're not capable of doing that, then you're not going to play it competitively, but it really makes it enjoyable solo because I can kind of see what happens. If I don't think something makes sense, then, you know, that's where initiative comes in and I'll say, okay, well, I'll make it legal if I can roll for initiative, those sorts of things. So that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I guess we could make a roll to see if uh, Huger accepts his order. So he needs a one or a two. I think we're, yeah, I'm right to the start of this phase. So this is the order issue phase. Johnson has none. We've got core attack stoppage checks. We have not had any small arms fire yet. So we don't have to make any stoppage checks. 
nobody wants to take initiative, and we do have some delay reduction. So Huger is under D1 delay, which if we look over here, we're gonna need a one or a two. So let's see what he wants to do. Nope, so Huger's not going this turn. That means that Longstreet's gonna start advancing without the support of Huger on his flank, which is gonna end up being pretty bad because Huger's still gonna move up through this crap through here, so that's gonna take him a couple turns. Um, but then we go to New Order Acceptance. We don't have any New Order showing up. Straggler Recovery Marker Placement. So this is not a Straggler turn. Um, if these guys don't end up moving another turn, I could potentially try to get another Straggler back, but I think I'd rather have them moving at this point. And then we go to movement and close combat. So that's kind of the situation, guys. I think I'm gonna try to knock out a couple more turns here, and maybe I'll do another video kind of showing the situation here at midday, and then probably do a wrap and see where we're at, who wins, what I thought of it. I'm enjoying it so far, so I'm looking forward to playing more of the series. Later.